Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. The very first person who reported the fire was at 438, and he reported a smoke plume. The last train, a coal train, was still on the ground when it was going by. So you need to understand here is that did the train cause the fire? Undetermined yet. But we know the fire originated two kilometers from my home. By five o'clock, my home was on fire. How could a fire that started at 430 get to my home? And the answer was the houses for of Lytton weren't designed for the weather of today, certainly not the extreme weather events. The grass fire flew like a dynamite fuse through the CNR right away. It jumped the right away, got into the village of Lytton, and then the fire just traveled like a snake or a dragon from home to home to home to home. Nothing could stop it. That's Chief Patrick Michelle of the Kanakabar Indian Band located just 15 kilometers south of Lytton, B.C. Michelle's Lytton home burned down in the fires that burned the town to the ground in June 2021. Chief Patrick says these disasters are entirely predictable. Since 1988, we've been warning the federal and provincial governments about cumulative effects and the climate change and the extreme weather events. Kanakabar has its own climate resilience plan and has been working on adapting to climate change for many years. I have 12 operating solar projects. Did you know that? Sure. I have battery storage in three separate locations. I have an entire community building powered by solar with battery storage, 36 hours backup storage. Sure, should the grid fail, that building will stay cool in the summer if the power is out. And that building will stay warm in the winter if the power is out. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All you had to do was put some solar in, throw some batteries on it, and bada bing, bada boom, Bob's your uncle. And Bob really is my uncle, by the way. Kanakabar also operates a large run of river project and is working towards self-sufficiency in energy, food, employment, and finances. The trouble is... We live in buildings. Now, that were designed for the weather of yesterday. Extreme weather events, straw and stick buildings and infrastructure. What is the alternative? So there's an old story that every person knows, the truisms that exist in the world. And one of them is the wolf and the three little pigs who comes across your straw home and he huffs and he puffs and he blows your house in. And the little pig goes, and he runs over to the straw house. But the wolf fails on brick. Now Kanakabar is determined to build back better, to find the metaphorical brick house that produces few or no emissions and is resilient to fire, floods, and severe weather. So they're working with SAIT's Green Buildings Program to find the best solutions. Yeah, there's a Melanie Ross and her team of up to 14 people are scouring the world. And Chief Patrick says they will build four duplexes using some of the best solutions that SAIT uncovers. We have commenced clearing the land. We're running in water lines. We're running in septic lines. BC Hydro will be here. Um, And so we're pulling up the single phase uh, electricity from Highway 1. We're putting in three phase. So again, we're still going to be grid connected. But if that grid fails, we have now scaled up our solar and wind production. Chief Michelle says building back better may take longer, but he's in no rush because he says he needs to make sure what they build is climate resilient. He says, I want a brick, not a straw home. In the same year Lytton burned down, they experienced 50 degrees Celsius, the hottest temperatures in Canadian history, floods that washed out roads in November, and some of the coldest weather on record in December. Kanakabar and Sait are determined to find the best solutions for a climate-changed world, and they hope other communities can learn from them. Learn more at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.